What's up everybody and welcome to this brand new Roadhog VOD review. In this video, we're going to teach you what you need to do in order to have the highest impact on Hog. The biggest problem that I'm sure many of you understand is how to balance that aggression versus that passivity. Many times you want to reach out, many times you want to push forward and get that flank play, but ultimately you might get punished, slept, killed, and you don't know when to push forward and try to find that impact or when to pull back and be reserved. You want to be that constant threat and put pressure on the enemy, but at the same time, you don't want to die so in this video we're going to be going over that controlled aggression and i'm going to teach you everything you need to know to have the highest amount of impact on hog so let's just jump right into it shall we so kicking it off on this first point the first thing that i'm going to be doing is trying to break shields roadhog is one of the best shield breakers in the entire game so i want to be picking apart their shields and putting constant pressure this will allow me to have more opportunities to secure a hook because the enemy team is going to be reeling, they're going to have their shields down. And one of those exact moments comes up right here. I actually shoot those Zarya on purpose to break her bubble. And then I try to uh, hook her as she's trying to leave my LOS. This allows me to do tons of damage to her. And she ends up killing herself, but I do the bulk of that damage. And it really opens up this fight for us. Now, unfortunately, coming up next is where I actually make an extremely vital mistake that might have cost us this point right here. The mistake I make is I actually get over eager and I try to hook this McCree through a really narrow passageway. What do you think would be a better way to do that? I could have A, kited back to my team and tried to punish this ball. B, I could have pushed far aggressively forward. Or C, I could have simply went to the left side of the car. Now, the problem with playing left side is I am outside of natural cover, but that would have been much better than trying to hit this insanely hard hook from a cross car. Regrouping with my team wouldn't have been a bad way either, but ultimately what I picked was the hardest option. So if you're in this exact same situation, Try to go for the consistent play. Trying to force through these extremely hard to hit hooks is going to be a way that you don't get that much value at all. And honestly, it's not a way for consistency, which is the best way to actually find impact on Hog. You want to have that controlled aggression, and a lot of that comes from consistency. So trying to hit these really hard to hit hooks is definitely not a way to do it. Now moving on to the second fight, I managed to do some things better. So I start this off with breaking shields as you should, and I actually miss a hook on the Sigma, unfortunately, because I'm trying to force it through. That being said, I simply just grind the shield down, and I find an opportunity on this Hammond, who really kind of messes up by slamming in into my CC. Then, I break the shield and then I see an opportunity to hook down a straight pathway to get an easy secure onto the Sigma. If the Sigma doesn't have shield, there's nothing you can do to stop me because I can hook him straight through his kinetic grasp. I easily follow up a kill on this Zenyatta and then I also follow up on this Baptiste and we managed to take this point quite convincingly. A lot of this was allowed to happen because of how much pressure I put onto the enemy tanks. I put tons of pressure onto the enemy Sigma and Hammond and it allowed us to push through this point quite easily even though the enemy had ultimate advantage on us now skipping ahead a couple of failed attempts at streets i want to be extremely safe here because i'm trying to get impact in order to win this fight but at the same time i also want to make sure that i don't get punished for it so i'm trying to play really smart and i'm trying not to overextend so something that you should notice here is that i really use the natural cover it allows me to dodge the sigma's accretion i just bob back and forth between natural cover so that i don't overextend and i don't get killed and cc'd then, I find an opportunity to whole hog this Hammond. Trading a one-for-one -one resource uh, of my whole hog for this Hammond is a definite favorable trade. I get to get a free kill without dying, and then I get to easily follow up on this Hanzo, who doesn't back up with his team. An easy hook because he's running away from me, I'm doing damage to him. I, it allows me to really kill him, and then the rest of this point is simply cleanup. I get to push up really aggressively. And this is the biggest point that I have to make to you when talking about controlled aggression on Roadhog. You need to play passive. You need to play really conservative when the enemy team is at a full fighting force. That CC plus focus fire is the easiest way to get shut down. That being said, after you destroy their CC, after you destroy the way that they can shut you down and focus fire you, as you proceed to get more picks, especially on CC heavy characters, this allows you to push up even further because there's actually less things that can shut you down. So it's essentially like you want to play incredibly passive at first. And then when you get these picks, when you find that advantage, you could afford to be more aggressive because you're less likely to get punished for it. So now we're fighting on third point and we only have 49 seconds on the clock. So we really only have one guaranteed fight, maybe a second fight, but it's going to be a staggered fight. So we really want to try to win it here and we're taking things slow. We managed to get an actual pick on one of their supports, so this is my green light to engage, and I hook the Sigma, and I bait out key cooldowns, I force peel. Now, this 
Hammond dives in, and what do you think I'm gonna do here? What what do you think is the most likely play that I'm gonna make here? And if you think that I'm gonna whole hog him into oblivion, you'd be correct, because that is exactly what I did before. Trading whole hog for Hammond, which is one of their big disruptors, one of their big tanks, is insane value, and I can do it extremely risk-free. I have my supports here. There's little chance that I'm gonna get punished for doing this, and it allows me to essentially get a free pick, stay alive, and press this advantage. I really wanna look for any advantages I can right now to try to win this team fight, so I'm going to whole hog him here. Now, if you want to utilize your advantages against every single other player, then come check out GameLeap.com. GameLeap.com gives you the competitive edge by giving you up-to-date and in-depth VOD reviews and analysis that will give you a leg up on the competition and make you that much better of a player as quickly as possible. If you want to learn more, wait to the end of the video and I'll break it down for you. For now, I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. Now that we have big advantage, our team is just ulting into them because we want to close this fight out as quickly as possible before the team has a chance to regroup. So I'm just pushing up here. I'm not getting overly aggressive but I am being aggressive enough to try to confirm kills. I'm just pushing up onto the enemy team and I'm trying to confirm the rest of these kills. I can't get easily killed. I can't get one-shotted. So I could be brawling on the front line, hooking targets, shooting body shots. They're really simple to hit. And we managed to cap this with no time left, but it's still a cap and this is still good. We managed to push it quite far. So this is good for us as a whole. And I managed to make some pretty sick plays here. A lot of the plays centered around when and where I took my engagements. I made sure that every single engagement I took I had my abilities off cooldown and a lot of the time I try to whole hog in a way that guaranteed me value instead of trying to go for these five and six man whole hogs that almost never get value now right off the bat here there's actually two things that I want to do the first thing I want to do is scout and make sure that the enemy doesn't have anything like a widow or a Hanzo or anything that I need to know about and secondly I'm trying to go for a cheeky hook here before I reposition it's essentially a free hook that I throw out I might not hit it but ultimately, I don't care about things like hook accuracy or anything like that. This hook is extremely low risk, but in the off chance that I actually hit one of these hooks, I could get a free kill and get some free time. While at the same time, it's very unlikely that I'll get punished here. So, essentially, I try to get a free hook. It doesn't work out, but that's okay. Now, a lot of this proceeding fight is a lot of just poke wars. I'm essentially just poking from long distances. I'm breaking enemy shields. I'm fishing for hooks, but I'm not going for anything concrete. But at the same time, I'm just trying to whittle down the enemy resources, right? I don't want them to be pushing it for free. Essentially, what I'm doing here is contesting space, and I'm putting the fear into the enemy about my potential to get impact. And at the same time, I'm putting constant pressure on them, so they simply can't walk in for free here. While not a lot of these hooks actually connect, I'm essentially fishing here. I don't need them to connect because if the enemy team pushes in hard, I can kite back. I can get my hook back later. So I see a lot of Roadhogs. They really want to get their Roadhog hook accuracy to something insanely high. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, you don't need your hook accuracy actually that high in order to climb. What you do need to do, you do need to make sure that you can hit easy hooks to hit. Like, it's fine if you can't hit these insane hooks. And if you mess up like me and hook the wall every once in a while, that's fine. No, what matters more than anything is that you can hit the easy hooks. The more hooks you hit, the more impact you'll have. Sure, that's definitely true. But what hurts Roadhogs more than anything is the fact that more often than that, more often than the fact that they can't hit these insane hooks, they get punished over and over again. If you can just fish for hooks, try to look for these opportunities, but don't get killed, you always have the chance to hook again. Hook is only on the six second cooldown. It doesn't matter if you keep missing hooks, as long as you're alive. The part that messes a lot of people up is they go for these hooks that are hit or die and they're hard hooks to hit. So that is one of the biggest things that I want to kind of relay to you. You don't need to be this CYX insane hooker in order to climb. That's not necessary in every single game. Some games you're going to be on, some games you're going to be off, and that's fine. But the point that I'm trying to make is, as long as you're consistent, as long as you don't die, as long as you don't overextend, you'll have that possibility to hook again and Roadhog himself could do tons of damage and pressure shields you don't only need to hit hooks to have impact now right here I do something extremely risky I know that the enemy has tons of ultimates online so what I'm trying to do is set up this flank play where I can try to secure two kills with my whole hog I want to hook and kill one person and whole hog someone else that being said I get extremely lucky here because the Hanzo is trying to grab dragon with his Zarya and I hook him out of his ultimate then we managed to kill the Zen and I already invested whole hog here so I actually get punished for this positioning, but the most important thing that I did here was I caught the enemy team off guard, they invested grab and dragon, and because I canceled the dragon, the enemy actually didn't get enough follow up in the grab, so we actually won this point because of this play. If I just simply wait with my team and try to play 
extremely safe, low risk, then there's no possible way we win this team fight because we don't have enough ultimates to out-sustain the massive amount of ultimates the enemy has. I know that they have Sigmo, I know they had Grab Dragon, and we didn't have a defensive ult to counteract this, but what we did have is my whole hog, and what I could do is try to make a play in the back line. While the, one of my allies ended up killing the Zen, even if he wasn't here, I would have been able to kill the Hanzo and the Zen alone, and we probably would have won this team fight regardless. So, that's something to keep in mind. You can play more risky when you know the enemy has massive ult advantage, because... If they have so many ults, if you don't try to play for a risky play, you don't try to play for guaranteed value to try to have high impact, the enemy team is just going to win purely due to the power level of their ultimates alone. Now, getting closer to the end of this video, I know what a lot of you might be thinking. Wow, this guy's hog is sloppy. He doesn't hit that many hooks. He's not popping off. He's not having high impact. He's not doing this. He's not doing that. Honestly, the fact of the matter is, this is exactly my point. You don't need to be that insanely hard carry hog every single game, especially when the enemy is playing an untraditional team comp. All you need to do is be consistent, try to get punished the least amount, and stay alive. Hog's strength is the fact that he's self-sufficient, and he has the ability to one-shot and turn fights alone. So, if you wait for your opportunity to turn these fights, then you can clutch up and win them, as long as you make sure that you don't get punished, and you wait for the opportunity for you to shine. I hope this guide has been helpful for you, in helping you understand some of the things that you could be doing on Hog in order to have more impact, and how to control a lot of that aggression to try to find guaranteed impact level in each and every one of your games. You know how else to find impact in each and every one of your games? GameLeap.com. We have the most jam-packed content available, handcrafted by coaches that are dedicated to help you improve. I've personally been stuck hundreds or thousands of hours in gold, plat, and diamond, and I know exactly what it feels like to never be able to improve. GameLeap.com is dedicated to help you overcome these obstacles so that you can become that self-actualized GM player we know you can be. Anyways, if that doesn't convince you, you don't have to take my word for it. GameLeap.com offers the 10-day money-back guarantee, so come check us out risk-free in the links here. All that being said, any questions, please leave them in the comments down below, as well as any suggestions for more VOD analysis in the future. I want to start doing more games where I don't necessarily play amazing, because I don't want to just show you me clicking heads or popping off. I want to show you some games where I struggle, and I want to point out why I struggle, and I hope that that is better for you as a viewer to learn. I've heard some comments, I've read some feedback, and I hope that you enjoyed this VOD review. Anyways, that's all I have for you today. I'm Coach Mills, and until next time, 